Welcome to another Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Chaos Sonic 1. Let's start off with this question. Sega allows you to be in charge of a classic Sonic game, but as a surprise, they make it based off of the Mega Drive story. Would it be the exact same, or would you use this to introduce the Freedom Fighters again in the series? I would keep it basically the same. Uh, maybe import the zones from Seasons of Chaos just to you know make it a bit longer. Stage selection is a trifle anemic compared to Mania, but it was specifically designed to be a very light and streamlined classic game. It's not really super story driven. And I feel like the freedom fighters need a actual story to hang their hat on. Mm-hmm. None of them wear hats though. Well, bunny Rotor did. Does. Bunny did something. I guess, yeah. And rotor does. Okay. You're right. You're right. I forgot about that little guy's hat. He's not so little. <laughs> Next question. Since Spinball used to be non-canon, but is canon again, does that mean once the cards are in place, the stars align, lawsuits are settled, and the potos fly, will Dark Brotherhood be canon? Also, after all you said, stranger things have happened, and we at least have some hope to not make the echidnas extinct. Uh, That would require a lot of puzzle pieces falling into place. And... Dark Brotherhood's weird anyway because it's set further down the timeline wherever modern is currently set, which could lead to potential problems. I don't know. I'm 99.9% certain that that game is dead and buried, and if we go any other direction with that stuff, it will be new. Next up, how would you gamify the pre-reboot villains like M and Adam, the Destructix, the Antiverse, Finitivus, Enerjack, and the Iron Queen. For the most of them, I wouldn't. I feel like they work better as comic characters. Uh, they don't really have immediate gameplay in mind when they were designed. They were designed for a narrative, not for a game. That being said, Enerjack would be perfectly fine as your end boss, Solaris, perfect chaos type of you know supersonic fight that would be awesome that's easy enough why didn't we get that (laughs) i mean i know why we didn't but yeah iron queen would work all right because her whole thing is controlling robots so that's not all that different from eggman she can be within a mecha that she's just controlling through magitech and it's not any different functionally than eggman sitting at a control panel when you get down to it um when you get to more of the just straight human or anthro characters, we've seen some fights here and there, but they haven't been the most remarkable. Let's be honest. I mean, the original Sonic and Knuckles fight in Sonic three and Knuckles. Yeah, that was amazing because that was it. But the character fights in SA one are like done in 20 seconds. And the Mephilus fights were, you were more fighting stuff around Mephilus than him himself. I don't know. I don't think there's been a really great character versus character fight in the game, so it's hard to draw a direct parallel. I mean, you know, he's looking at Sonic Heroes. That's a good model to base everything on, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. If given the chance to bring back the pre-reboot universe, would you do it? After all, it still had potential till the mess, in my opinion. I don't know what mess. There was a lot of messes. (laughs) Like, which one are you specifically referring to? I mean, it is a mess itself. A (laughs) delightful, wonderful mess that we all got to play in. And sure, if I had the opportunity to finish those stories that I so desperately wanted to, absolutely. Yes. I would uh, not be opposed to any of the previous Sonic universes returning in some fashion, comic or otherwise. Yes, please. Give me the multiverse. I need it. My friend Brown Phantom always found it weird that some characters have first and last names, like Amy Rose, Miles Prower, and and Sally Acorn, to name a few, while others don't. If you were allowed to give other characters their own last names, which would you pick? I wouldn't. It's weird, sure, but I feel like that's just kind of part of the world. I can't think of Sonic 
McFly or something. It's he's Sonic the Hedgehog. That's just who he is. Uh, right. If anything, I would almost want to roll it back and, you know, change it to Amy the Hedgehog or Tails the Fox for consistency's sake. But I don't know. I, I like there being a bit of a mix. It's a bit different and different isn't bad. What's the problem with Ogilvy Maurice? How could you do that to him? He's He has a perfectly good name and you just throw it out. How dare you? I mean, technically, I guess you could say his name, last name in the movies was Wachowski, but, you know, that's by weird adoption sort of thing. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, well. You mentioned in my previous mini episode how you had a possible idea for Catella. How would that pitch be? I, what was it? What was it? Um, now, this wasn't anything ever actually pitched or written down. This was just kind of a back pocket idea of if the opportunity arose, you know, what do. But it was some along the lines of she was uh, still from space. Uh, still, a, instead of, uh, what was she in the cartoon? Like a big game hunter or a bounty hunter or something like that? I don't know. Basically, just she was, a she was still a hunter XP. <laughs> Yeah, um, she would still be kind of a hunter for sport, but more of a general conquest sort of thing. Right. And the one idea that I do remember liking is in the episode, she tricks Sonic or somebody with like this puppet. And so retooled the idea in that her gimmick was these kind of marionette control things. So there'd be very simple like crossbars that hovered around like drones and they would attach these energy strings to the victim and basically control them like a marionette. And that's kind of cool. be varying degrees of willpower control. So that wasn't a complete rehash of robotization, but still kind of that general idea. And she's out to hunt down the strongest on the planet. And those she could take control of would become her kind of hunting hound type characters. So you have these marionette controlled characters going up against each other and the heroes and uh there'd be a mutual respect between her and her and eggman but of course all relationships that eggman get into becomes toxic at some form so there would be a falling out of some kind but yeah, that's about it are you saying eggman is toxic because you're absolutely correct <laughs> he's a bad yeah egg. yeah 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 with the reveal that some writers saying he or she haven't even seen the original material, causing a lot of backlash for fandoms, do you think it might have been better if the writers that didn't see the original stuff would have said, I haven't seen the original, but I'm researching the original stuff and taking a look at the source material? Yeah, I I think if you are brought onto a franchise project, even if it is a reinvention or a new take entirely or what have you, you should do the due diligence and at least research at the basics of where it came from to get the feel for it, to get the themes and the central idea. Like with Mega Man, I could never play them. I, I just, I bad at Mega Man, like ludicrously bad at Mega Man. I still made a point of deep diving into the week. He's looking up playthroughs, speed runs, uh, ancillary material, you know, whatever I could find because I wanted to go into this and make sure that it was an authentic feeling Mega Man book. I may not be able to play the game, but I need to understand it because I need to do a good job with it. So I'm not saying that, you know, licensed material has to be a hundred percent faithful to the source material. Sometimes it can be okay to go off the beaten path a little bit, but I still feel like you need to know where it came from so you can show it the proper respect. Right. I agree. I think it's kind of silly that he, you know, be like, yeah, I haven't seen anything or read anything of the original materials. Like, really? Then why are you writing it? Just, hmm, hmm, kind of awkward. Any ideas for extra guardians of the Master Emerald so we can get our boy off that rock? I assume he's referring to Knuckles and the, the rock is the floating island. Since, well, I like him being the guardian of the Master Emerald, I agree, it does get tedious. No, uh, I still like my idea that Styx has been living in the wilds forever. It's never been noticed until now. Um, and darn it, bring chaos back. 
say chaos is like just chilling out in the water around the shrine. And when something bad happens, he pops up and stops it. Yeah. You know, have to call pop up to and say, that's a bad thing. Stop it. And then he stops it. It would be simple. It would be elegant. It would be cool because it's chaos at the call, but I don't know. Mm. Uh, why they gotta be dead, Sega? Why you do this to me? Battle between the Desert Jackrabbit and the Sandblasters. Do it raid against the Mid- Midesta Egg Army. How would a battle between the Sandblasters, Neptus, and the Desert Raiders go? Oh, that would be rife with peril. Because <laughs> the Sandblasters would look to hook up with the Desert Raiders, of course. You're the local freedom fighters. You want to oust the Egg Army. Sure, let's all be buddies. Except Jack and his team don't take prisoners for the most part, as certainly not the egg boss and the desert Raiders are kind of trying to maintain the status quo. Can't really do that. If you murder Nepheth. So, uh, hmm. there'd have to be some last second turncoat isms in there. And why does Jack always end up getting betrayed? Oh, because he's an extremist. Yeah, I guess so. So, <laughs> There would be a lot of war games happening in very rapid succession. That'd be fun. Oh, that yeah. would be neat to explore. Ah, <sighs> what a shame we'll never get to see it. If the Destructives became a Scourge's team, would the anti version of the Destructics join the Freedom Fighters? I imagine the Constructics would assist, but not really join. Constructics. <laughs> yeah, I just made that up. It makes sense to me. It's about as good as any other thing. Take yeah. two. Yes. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there are no more takes. If you get the chance to make a game version of the anti universe, would you jump at the chance or make things differently? I, I don't really see the appeal. If it were like a DLC pack to reskin a game as it is to give it a new twist that might be kind of fun but i don't feel like the antiverse stands on its own enough to warrant its own game the whole point of the antiverse is it's derivative of the prime universe yeah maybe you could do it it's possible but i don't know who would even be the main playable character would you would it just be scourge like i don't know i imagine i mean if instead of saving the day, it's his conquest of Antimobius. And that could be kind I of fun. I guess you could do that. <laughs> that could be kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> Make it the boost style of gameplay and you're just plowing through guards and you hear them go, ah, as he smacks through <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, why not? Give him a gun. There we go. It's just <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog again. Going back to 2005. Hit him with a bullet. It'd be faster to run up and punch him himself. Yeah, well, you know, he can hit them in the face with multiple bullets and also run up there and punch them in the face at the same mm, time. Possibly. So, you know. He just puts them in between each knuckle and runs up and punches them with bullets. There we go. Good enough. Brings a whole new meaning to bullet punch. <laughs> will this really be the last time we see the robot crew in Blaze's world or will they be rebuilt? That's up to Sega. They killed them off in the uh, Japanese social media stories, and I just carried the torch from there. So we'll see what they have planned for them. Yeah, I know some people were really disappointed about that, which it is disappointing. It's like, oh, I don't blame them at all. It's like, come on, I, I, I want to see what happened. Like, if they're gone, like, how did they get gone? Show, show us. All this off-screen garbage. Ah! Next question. With Scrapnik Island showing the things we thought we would never see again in Sonic's history, does this mean that it is possible to bring back characters you wanted to use again in a modern setting? To see the different interactions between the certain characters and modern? We need Team Hooligan and Honey back, Ian! I don't know. Um, Scrapnik Island is a curveball for me in a lot of ways. And again... Big props to Danny for getting that off the ground. I'm really looking forward to it. But I honestly don't know exactly what it, what doors it has opened or what possibilities there are. So we'll all just have to wait and see. Fascinating. I'm looking forward to that too. I mean, it's like, what, what even is this? What is going on here? Oh no. Oh yes. But also, oh no. 
I, I'm 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 very very curious. Next question: If Vector is raising Charmy, then is Vector Charmy's Bumble King? You better believe it. <laughs> Anything for an endorsement paycheck. <laughs> Uh, too bad they can't afford to sponsor the Bumblecast. <laughs> what a shame. And the last question from Chaos Sonic 1 for this month. So Sonic and Amy meet their manga counterparts, Nikki and Amy. How does it go? Especially since manga Amy is Nikki's girlfriend. Also, no, this is not a pitch. Was it... Were they boyfriend and girlfriend? Or was she his little sister? Or am I thinking of somebody else? I, uh, it's been a long time since I looked at the Yeah, I, I don't remember. Somebody will make mention of it in the comments or, I don't know, maybe in Discord. Of course, I feel maybe. like a lot of the details were kind of in flicks in general, but... I'm being told they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Amy and Nikki okay, were... Okay, I'm thinking of something else. We're together. Nikki has a different little sister. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Then, um... I'm not super familiar with Amy's characterization from that manga, but I imagine it's much more kind of low key, maybe even like puppy love type stuff since they're more inclined to be kind of classic era. Um, Sonic would be a little taken off guard that this is another incarnation of him <laughs> of all the multiverse counterparts. This one's different, mm -hmm. but uh, there is a hero deep down in Nikki. It has to come out through some kind of magical manifestation, but there's a hero in there, and everybody can appreciate that in the end. It's true. It's true. Speaking Meanwhile, Amy's kind of giving him the side eye going, see, they're making it work, and Sonic's like, not now. <laughs> not in front of the alternates. Not in front of anybody. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. And that's all we got from Chaos Sonic 1 this month. Thank you for submitting your questions. If you want a Bumblecast mini of your own, head over to patreon.com slash Bumblecast or ko-fi.com slash Bumblecast and send $25 our way. We'll see you next time.